Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. We are so glad to have you with us today. Friday, Courtney, that is the day. The date is April 17th, if you can believe it. We're in the home stretch to May. <laughs> We are in the home stretch to May, and um, I just, you know, had a, a moment to myself, I have to tell you, because we just heard the governor's news conference a little bit earlier. Oh, and about Texas schools, you know, our e kids aren't going to go back to school for the remaining of the semester. Right. So, so how, are you, how are you feeling about that news? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's going to be a challenge, but uh, it, it's best. You know, it is best for that. But six more weeks of um, homeschooling. <laughs> Can't Six wait. more weeks of, of partying and, you know, <laughs> playing with the dog in the backyard. Well, and speaking of partying, how was Orlando's birthday yesterday? How did you do your whole socially distant birthday celebration for him? You know, it was a little strange, and he did say, it's so weird, it doesn't really feel like a birthday, and uh, we made the best of it. You know, my dear friend Allie, she's a fantastic pastry chef. She made this beautiful marble cake, but for any adult birthday, I mean, I feel like you need some adult beverages, right? And why pour it yourself when you can literally get it right to your doorstep? Oh. So I reached out found somebody on social media, figured out when they were going to be in my neighborhood. I'm talking about bovine and barley. Have you heard about this? Okay. It's basically like an adult ice cream truck. Yeah. Only instead of delivering ice cream, it delivers dot, dot, dot. Cocktails. <laughs> yes. That is right. So Bovine and Barley, of course, is a bar restaurant, not open right now, obviously, due to the coronavirus, but you can follow them on social media. They have a full, this is the van that comes around, basically, they started this, y'all, last Saturday with one van. They now have three because it's been so popular. We got a couple double margaritas, we had a michelada for Orlando, he was very surprised, and his moustache, you see that there, he's been growing that, but... Um, <laughs> Um, he was totally surprised and it was awesome because you just text them. You follow them on social media, you can text them the number and your order and they'll be in your neighborhood at certain times. I mean, they're going everywhere. Um, Christina, who is um, handling basically their social media on normal times, she's taken over this truck and she says she's getting texts all day long. It's becoming very popular. Well, that explains why she has not responded to my text yet, because I knew the moment you mentioned <laughs> this on today's show, Courtney, they would be blowing up. So please, 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 all I need, two margaritas, make it a double, the reg regular kind, and literally you can deliver them anytime this weekend, Christina. Please, 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 we will be waiting. What a fantastic idea. And talk about a great thing that yeah. has come out of this weird scenario, right? And we do, in case you missed it, we do have on our website, HoustonLife.tv, all the info for bovine and barley. There it is. Oh, wow. We even did a little web article about it. Very, very cool. It's a we beautiful, did, yeah. beautiful delivery. My goodness. I, I cannot wait to get ours. And they have, what, margaritas and micheladas and all kinds of things, Moscow mules. So um, have at Daiquiris. It. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's so, so good. I have to tell you, it lifted everyone's spirits. And how great is this? I mean, I feel like, the, you know, all of these bars and restaurants, Derek, we've talked about this. They're all adapting to this bizarre time that we're in. And what a way to support. I mean, Bovine and Barley, uh, downtown area, but they're part of a, a larger restaurant group, um, Fish and all these other places. Uh, of course, there's one on U of H campus. And But it's such a great way to support. And what a great Great way for them to figure out how to keep people employed and how to keep making money. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you said it. And just a fun novelty, right? I'm going to post on my neighborhood Facebook group tonight. Maybe they can stop by our neighborhood and, and yeah. do a little roadside service. It really is a fantastic idea. And uh, yeah, if you haven't placed your order, do it now because something tells me they're going to they're gonna run out of booze, right? And what a great idea for a date night yeah, as well. Yeah, and don't be nervous. Like if you live in if you live in Katy or you don't live inside the loop, don't be nervous. They go anywhere and now they have those three vans. So they literally say, just text them that number and they'll deliver. They'll make it happen. I mean, that's a pretty serious promise. What if you live in Dallas? That's 
that's a little bit of a drive, but we've all we've all got to Where keep, is our, that? keep our sanity somehow. <laughs> well, I love it for a date night idea as well because I know a lot of people are trying to switch it up somehow. I mean, we play Scrabble every night and it never seems to get boring. Brandon, who apparently does not like board games, turns out he loves board games, right? So for a lot of people who are looking to change it up and keep their relationship a little bit fresh, how about a little delivery of the cocktail? And we would love your ideas, by the way, I, always. We yeah. get some of the best ideas from our viewers about date night ideas. So if there is something we need to know about, please let us know on our Facebook pages or through Instagram, and we'll try to let everybody know. You know, what's funny is Orlando and I were just having this conversation right before we went on, and um, we were talking, normally we do Mexican food takeout on Fridays, but we did that yesterday for his birthday. So he said, are we doubling up on Mexican food tonight, or what are we doing? And I said, I just kind of rattled off a couple places, and he said, well, you know, we've got to figure out what we're doing for date night, because typically for birthdays, we do like a family celebration, and then we do a date night. So this is a perfect conversation. We need to figure out what our date night is. I don't know if we're going to eat in the car or, uh, you know, what's going to happen here, but <laughs> maybe we'll just take the food outside. <laughs> Eating in the car, date night in the car. You know, it just it's a throwback to high school. My goodness. Weren't we all doing that? <laughs> Allegedly, right? Ooh, were we? Oh, my. <laughs> That's another show. I mean, that was the only place to Anyway, okay, so um, speaking of relationships, too, I think this is something that is, it's really great that we're doing a segment about this today. So matchmaker Amber Neal, you know her, Courtney, we've had her on the show a million times. She's going to weigh oh, in yeah. on just relationship advice because I know a lot of people right now during this time, you're spending more time at home, potentially more time with your romantic partner, and that could lead to questions like, Wow, is this all there is? <laughs> or like, wow, do I mm. am I still in love with this person? <laughs> Don't worry, folks. We are gonna get you through. Right. She's like, gonna have wow, great advice. I really am starting to get to know you. Yeah. <laughs> all all this time all these years, and we're finally, finally getting to know each other. And you know what? I know I'm not saying this in jest. I really do believe that for people who are who need to maybe not stay together, maybe the last few weeks, maybe this has been a time to let them know, like, hey, this is not working out, we're gonna move forward, right? So we're trying to be yeah, optimistic I mean, here today. I feel like we, we are trying to be optimistic. So I do feel like, you know, tensions are high anyway. Everybody's cooped up at home. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to ignore maybe the small things when we're all together. So I, I, I go back to Ali Sadiq when he was talking about how his wife opens the bag <laughs> from the side and not the top and it totally bugged him, yeah. you know? And so those are like little things that we don't notice in everyday life that all of a sudden they're bugging and you have to feel like, okay, is this really worth it? Because it's the side, not the top. And, you know, it's sort of like the toilet paper argument, the top or the bottom, you know? Like which way do you put the toilet paper on the dispenser? Oh, so, the top, absolutely. I don't know. You, the, you just have to pick your battles. Facing outward. Oh, totally the top. What? People yes. who do that another totally. way? animals. Uh, I'm still waiting to figure out what Strange. the things that I don't like about Brandon. And I'm worried that he is now with more time <laughs> at home with me. Uh, part of me worries like, oh my gosh, is he getting a little bit sick of me? We have been pretty good about the FaceTime and the Zoom calls and all of that. Last night I actually did a FaceTime with my friend Jen, who I've known for more than 20 years now. I met her in LA. She was the first friend I had in LA. I was so scared. I was like on the verge of tears for months and she was so nice to me. I met her at church and it was great to just sit and chat with her drink a bottle of champagne, a little bit puffy today. Yeah. But that has been a nice way to sort of, I felt like it was nice to give Brandon a little bit of a break. Like he could do his thing for a couple hours. Sorry, that's my phone ringing. It's my mom, sorry. I thought my ringer was off. Who's calling you? It, it just happens, it just happens. She's probably concerned about like something she's Every seen Every day on the we news. do a show at this time. Every I, day. And my ringer <laughs> is off. I think she's probably on emergency bypass. So anyway, <laughs> that just happened, but that's okay. Maybe hey. we need to find out why she's calling. I know, typically, I mean, she knows it's showtime. Maybe, there, maybe there's something wrong. I'll, I'll call her during commercial break. But you've been hearing a lot, probably, okay. Courtney, and I know a lot of our viewers have, about things that might change a little bit after coronavirus, right? And I know the, the governor yeah. just gave his press conference, as you mentioned. We've seen these conferences um, from the White House every single day as well. And what might that look like? Well, some people have said maybe the end of the handshake is near. 
which I think could be you know, I, amazing. I agree, right? Yeah, I know you're not a fan of the handshake. What's interesting, though, about that is I've always noticed that you would always greet people in the studio with, hey, what's up? I'm Derek. You would go out for the handshake first. Um, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. You are, like, that's your thing. And so I feel like it's going to be a lot harder for all of us to not, to not do that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, it's like a normal thing. The hug, the handshake, it's probably more in our DNA than we want to admit. Yeah, and, and make no mistake, I'm probably getting hate mails as we speak about the handshake. I, I do like a nice firm handshake, and I think that customarily, obviously, we've all grown up and learned that, you know, give someone a nice firm handshake. You go yeah. for the job interview. That's part of what we do, right? It's sort of ingrained in our habits. But I do think also the, the facts around the table, it's very clear that shaking someone's hand is a great way to share bacteria and viruses and all of those things. And so I think it's mm -hmm. a conversation worth having. And in fact, there is someone, you know this person, Courtney, so I'm not gonna mention who this person was, but I remember vividly one day, someone, I was about to shake someone's hand, right? And there was a- Oh gosh. When I say it was a cough or a sneeze or a combination of whatever, it truly was like a massive cough sneeze into the hand and then this person reached right then, out to shake my hand. And I felt totally trapped because I was thinking, oh my gosh, sort of like the ee, 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 ee music was playing in the background as this hand was extending toward me. And I was thinking, wow, this person just coughed, sneezed into their hand and I grabbed it and I did a nice shake. And then I immediately sort of excused myself and, uh, and went and scrubbed my hands. But I feel like a lot of people, even despite what is going on in the world right now, we've talked about it here on the show, people leaving yeah. their used masks or gloves in grocery store or retail parking lots. If we have not learned that lesson by now, if we have not learned basic hygiene mm -hmm. by now during this time, when will we actually learn it? And maybe for that reason, because some people are just unable to use common sense, maybe that's another vote to ixnay on the handshake. Yeah, I can't wait to debrief with you to figure out who this person was no, that I, did that. No, but I do say. feel like, you know, the other thing is, too, um, how we're going to, um, like, just navigate in public now in restaurants like are you you know you're probably going to be so much more aware of how things are served um who's touching what what you're touching atm cards or uh signing something you know i, I don't know i just feel like people are going to use their own pens from now on or um you know and i also think too that a lot of people aren't going to rid of their masks very quickly I think um, that's going to be something that we're going to see for a while, that people don't want to let that guard down just yet. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. I'm, time will tell. We'll see in, in a few months down the road. There was actually an article that was posted on ReadersDigest.com. I always loved Reader's Digest as a kid. I started reading it at my grandmother's house. She always had a stack on the back of her toilet. So a few of the other things, in addition to handshakes, that the theory is maybe these things will be out. More, more hand sanitizer available in public places. Our relationship with restaurants, as you just mentioned, Courtney, may change. More people might use bidets. Hmm. Bidet, my good lady. Uh, <laughs> it all, good how many bidet. times have we talked about bidets on Houston <laughs> Live? It's, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. A lot. Right? More companies will permit employees to work <laughs> remotely. Knew? That is a really good thing. And I think we talked about the air pollution, right? The air pollution maps, the satellite images of major cities, including Houston, right? And we know that dirty air affects right. our health, especially if, we, especially if we have chronic or underlying respiratory issues. So that's a good thing. If more people are working from home, maybe in Houston, maybe yeah. in Houston, those freeways and our roads will be less clogged moving forward. May, we can only hope, right? And the other thing that we can hope moving forward is that people now respect their, your personal space.
So like the close talkers, maybe they'll get like the the six, you know, the social distancing doesn't need to mm. end. You know what? What drives me absolutely crazy? What? Absolutely crazy. Besides the um, close talker is let's say you're checking out somewhere, whether it be, you know, at a grocery or you ran to the pharmacy or you're simply like running in to pay for gas, whatever this is. And you you are making your transaction at this area and then somebody literally you could turn around and hit noses with them. Mm -hmm. why, why is that necessary? Why are you, you know, back up? So I feel like now with the social distancing, maybe people will understand we don't need to be that close to strangers, to it, one another all the time. I hope you are right, but I fear you are wrong because I think the same people who are going to stand that close to you, I think there are a lot of very anxious people out there and they think that by standing in your space, it's going to get them to the checkout counter faster than by tailgating you on the freeway. Faster. Like, yo, bro, get off my back. You're not going to get there any faster, right? So yeah. while I like to think that some yeah. people will be more aware, I think that those close talkers are the same people who, like, with no awareness, would discard their nasty used gloves in the parking lot. I, I, that's how I feel. I'm sorry. I, I like to be an optimist, right? But Spot I think I'm on. also a realist, and I think some people are beyond help. Maybe I'm one of those people. I mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> beyond help. Beyond help is where we are today. <laughs> hey, before I talk about my sign today, yeah. um, my mom, I just got a text from my mom, and she is requesting that the Bovine and Barley make a little drink stop in Flagstaff, Arizona. <laughs> Not sure that's going to make it there today, Mom, but you can only hope. <laughs> that, well, listen, it sounds reasonable. They said Eileen's they deliver anywhere. Some cocktails. Doesn't that sound so good right Anywhere. now? Anywhere. Let me see if I can make that happen, Eileen. Remember, I we did those so. Picos um, takeout so I thought I'd drinks. Add and that was, I'm still yes, recovering from yes. those. They were the strongest, most delicious Ugh. fresh margaritas I've had, like, in this decade. <laughs> anyway, go for it. So, what are you going to say? So good. And by the way, I will. Pico's, by the way, if you go there today, they have mariachi in the pickup line. Just FYI, in the parking lot. It's so much fun. What? Um, so, yeah, the, the spring sign um, for HL. Add a little spring color. And this is basically like that sidewalk chalk design. We saw a, a darker, brighter color from these two sisters, Ava and Emma, but they made two signs for me. So I wanted to bring out this beautiful kind of spring palette pastel chalk design that they did for my sign today. I think it's beautiful. It matches well, again, with the uh, Frankie and Flora uh, fresh flower bouquet that I have. So feeling a little springy on this kind of cloudy day. And it's warmer today, too. Yeah, I know. It's warmer and kind of cloudy, but that's OK. We, we can get through that. I think a little bit of rain is on the way. Please let all your artists know, Courtney, how much we appreciate their artwork, because they have been knocking it out of the park day after day after day. Plus, it's a, it's a great way. It like perfectly matches our show's colors, and I think for this post-Easter week, the color palette was a very fine choice. Fabulous. I will pass that along. I love it. It's been a lot of fun. All right, well, let's chat about today's show. And I know hand sanitizer has been top of mind for a lot of people over the past month. And this is something that I think is so cool. Yeah, Courtney, you've got one of the very first bottles. It's a local distillery helping out the community. It's called William Price Distillery, based in Garden Oaks. And they've been providing hand sanitizer to first responders and the general public. It's a brand new distillery, by the way. So in case you haven't heard that name, truly, they had not opened their doors to the public yet to serve liquor and they find themselves in this situation where now instead of brewing booze they are making hand sanitizer we're going to learn a little bit more about their story and it's so cool they have this no contact drive through for pickup you're seeing it on your screen right now and the best news of all we're going to tell you how you can get your hands on your very own bottle very cool yeah, it's super cool. Glad to see that they're making some, you know, lemonade out of the lemons that mm. we're dealt with right now. Also, guys, it is Friday, so you know what that means. Oh, hello, Gabe. <laughs> Lauren Kelly's boyfriend. Well, 
they are back and he's back here with some simple exercises to take us into the weekend workouts that all ages can try no equipment needed or you could just sit and watch you could sit and watch yeah lauren posted a picture of gabriel on her instagram this morning and i about had a heart attack i wasn't sure i'd be able to make it to the office but somehow it all worked <laughs> out all right after the break how to make your relationships survive the quarantine we'll have advice to connect better with your partner right after this Well, spending a lot of time at home with your significant other sounded like a good idea four weeks ago. <laughs> and uh, for some couples, quarantine has put a strain on their relationship. Oh, yeah. Matchmaker <laughs> and founder of Meridate, Amber Neal, is joining us now with tips you can use to help your union survive. Amber, welcome to you. It's great to see you there at home. And I mean, I know we're sort of making a little bit of a joke about this, but seriously, quarantine can be really tough on a lot of people's relationships. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we, there, you know, there's going to be some people that are going to go through a, a nightmare in this situation. You're going to find out really quickly who you're married to. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start about how we basically get through this, because, um, yeah. you know, th this is trying times for all of us. And I feel like tensions are high, whether you have kids, you don't have kids, you're working close quarters. So where do you kind of begin? Well, you know, it's it's interesting because um, the divorce, there's been an increase in divorce requests. Uh, it went up 50% in one week um, in other countries. And so we're trying to avoid that here in the States. Uh, January is typically dubbed the divorce month and quarantine is, is kind of showing the same results um, because at the end of the day, you guys, um, in any relationship, we need to have balance. Uh, we need communal time with uh, other people and our family and then we need autonomous just for ourselves. Um, and this balancing act is what's causing those two basic relational needs to not be met because we need to be close sometimes and we need to be separate sometimes. And if you're an introvert, you're kind of screwed right now. Well, <laughs> and we're about to get into some of these basic tips we can all follow. You mentioned introverts. Of course, introverts get their energy or recharge their batteries by being alone. Extroverts are the opposite. They recharge their batteries by being with other people. So is is it equally difficult for both introverts and extroverts during this time, Amber? Yeah, it really is. I mean, because the people that want to be social, they're going nuts. And the people that are introverts are going nuts because they can't be alone. So uh, it's it's just as frustrating to both people, um, especially if there's a family involved. You know, if you're adding kids or extended family, like grandparents or things like that, it can really be tough. And, um, you know, you I know, think this is this is such a great conversation right now, too. Um, yeah. do, go ahead, Amber. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying, like, after a few weeks, if you guys don't have a plan in place uh, to figure out how you handle uh, anything that puts you in a survival mode, you your home will become like a minefield and you will be stepping on eggshells. So I just want to give you some tips today on how to keep your marriage together during the quarantine. Um, and then I've got some more tips too, because you guys know I love the five love languages. So I'm going to give you some guys advice on that too coming up. <laughs> Well, let's talk about that because you say to start with a family meeting. Let's just like clear the slate. Everybody start on the same page. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of assuming is is bad for any time in your life. Um, you don't want to assume. You need to talk to your family. Um, hey, how do, you, how do you need help? How do you need space? How do you recharge your batteries? Um, chances are, if you don't make it explicit what your needs are, then you're, you can't expect your family to know what you need. So you want to, you know, if you want to make a sign, you want to write it down, you all agree to it, but you definitely want to have a, a family meeting and decide, okay, this is what I need to get through this. And as nice, Amber, as it is for a lot of people to spend time at home, I mean, for a lot of people, the home is the sanctuary, right? A lot of people might feel like they're sort of in each other's space or stepping on each other's toes. Should we yeah. consider changing up our living space or, or essentially where we hang out in the house? Completely. Now is there's never been a greater time than to remodel, 
redecorate, clean out that garage, uh, turn that office into another space, convert your patio into a space, anything that you do to where you can actually have that separation, you need the separation, even if you just go outside, but you need to create uh, yeah. a little bit better living situation, living quarters for yourself, especially if it's a family. And I think it's important too, right, to have that um, that space where you can kind of exit. And you say too, just even go outside. Vitamin D does the body good, does the soul. Yeah. So even just a quick walk outside to just kind of decompress. Yes, it does wonders for cabin fever. And apparently the virus doesn't survive in heat. So, you know, with this Texas weather, I don't think the virus has a chance much past May anyway. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, get outside. Feel the sun on your face. Go for a walk. Whatever you got to do, just get outside. Do not stay in the house. 24-7. Resentment is a word that I know in couples counseling, it's probably thrown around a lot, right? It's a time when you're yes. spending more time with your partner, you start to resent them for little things that they're doing or maybe things that they're not doing. And you say, Amber, that if you're resenting your partner, that is the, the quickest way to kill your emotional connection. It is. You guys have got to clean up your emotional trash. When something goes down, you know, and everybody processes differently and it doesn't mean you have to deal with it right then, but you definitely want to make a time to come back and talk about that and clear the air uh, because, yeah, and then if you have a partner that's like, uh, nothing's wrong and they just won't tell you nothing's wrong, then that's when you want to go and use your listening skills and say, this is what I heard. This is how I felt. I need space. I need reassurance. I need help with something. And because if you don't, that's going to get you into trouble quickly if you just let things simmer when it's already in tight quarters. What I think is great, too, you also say to appreciate your partner's survival strategy. So praise is also going to go a long way as well. Absolutely. Just appreciate the difference. You know, a lot of times uh, people don't understand. They say you don't know somebody until you get into a, a real serious situation because we think different. And there's like three types of ways, typical usually that people fall into one of three ways that they deal with survival. Um, one is that it's me against the world. Uh, the self-preservation, you know, they've got everything planned, go give them a kiss because they've already got all the food, they've got stockpiles of everything, they didn't even have to go buy toilet paper, they were ready for something to go down. Uh, <laughs> and then the social partner, uh, my network will, you know, I can make one phone call and I've got toilet paper, or I've got food, or whatever that case may be, they have a huge network, so they depend on that. And then you have the one-on-one -on -one partner who, it's me and you against the world. And so they put a lot of uh, nurturing and attention and time into that relationship because they really do feel like if something big does happen like this, it's me and you against the world. Um, and I think that's where, you know, I recommend more than anything else I've said today, talk about, identify which one of these that you identify with and discuss which one truly benefits the family the most. Amber Neal, thank you so much for coming in. We always enjoy your conversation. Hopefully next time we'll see you in studio. But again, yeah. uh, we appreciate you coming on. And to connect with Amber, you can visit our website and click on the Scene on Houston Life section of the website. Thanks again, Amber. And speaking of relationships, earlier we asked you to share your date night ideas with us on Facebook. We're going to get to some of those after the break. Welcome back. You know, so many of you are joining the conversation to share your date night ideas with us on Facebook. And Lucy sent in a photo looking great. It says balcony date night dinner, no kids. I love that. That's a great idea. Look at that spread. I know. It looks beautiful and delicious. And Liz wrote in saying she plans to put out a little beach picnic on the living room floor, complete with beach towels, yummy finger foods, pina coladas, and a beach ocean scene she found <laughs> on YouTube. That is fantastic, Liz. Nicely done. I know. I love that idea. And Tiffany wrote in saying wine and beer, a wine and beer crawl in the house. Each room is a different one. Ah. Oh. I love that idea. The thing is, I want to be invited to all of these things, but too bad, social distancing. I and know. I think we had one more there uh, that we didn't quite get to. Oh, there it is. Brenda, Rolly's Frozen Custard in Pearland has a truck that, when invited, comes to neighborhoods with scoops, sundaes, waffle cones, and old school floats. 
Oh my gosh, that oh. sounds delicious. Rollies yes. frozen custard. I'm gonna look look them up. Maybe even drive down to Pearland and you know. I know. Hook myself up. Well, thank you so much for those comments. Keep them coming. We always love to hear right your ideas. <laughs> And still ahead, her boyfriend is back, y'all. It is Friday, and Lauren Kelly and Gabriel will share some fun, simple exercises anyone can do at any age or simply just watch. <laughs> Their Fitness Friday workout is coming up next. We'll be right back. Uh, welcome back to Houston Life. You know, one of the many things people are getting used to, of course, while staying at home, is figuring out how you fit in the workout at home, you know, without the fancy gym equipment. It's so true, and including our friends Lauren Kelly and her boyfriend slash fitness guru, Gabriel. They are back today with some simple exercises anyone can do, and the best part, you don't need equipment. Well, you guys, we made it to Friday. Yeah, I think it's Friday. It's Friday, right? It's Friday. Okay, good. Fitness Friday it is, and a couple of changes to our workout today include... A few things to uh, make sure that people of all ages are getting workouts in. We had a lot of people say that, hey, we want to be able to do this workout as well, so everybody should be able to do this, and we're going to start with his abs. So shirt off. Shirt off. <laughs> My neighbors didn't see that. So if you're quarantined with somebody else at home, this is a great couples exercise. And what are we gonna call it? The wall sit, the back to wall sit? Something like that? Sounds about right. All right, so watch what me and Gabe are gonna do. We're gonna press our backs up against each other and we're gonna slowly go into a wall sit, but you have to use your partner's back to stay up. I'm tired now. We did it again. We made it through another day. <laughs> kind of. Do you think Minnie will work out with us? Hey, Minnie, come over here. <laughs> no, Minnie's not coming. But I have to tell you, those wall sits are harder than you think. And um, they are the cutest couple, seriously. But. Were they telling us to do something? Because I just kind of got entranced, I'm going to be honest. I just wanted a martini or, or two. I could sit back and watch that all day. It's funny, too. Like, some people in quarantine are looking better and better and better. And the rest of us, I, I don't know. We can always make up for it down the road, right? Lauren, Gabriel, thank you so much for that. And coming up next on Houston Life, are you considering withdrawing money from your 401k to help make ends meet during the coronavirus? Our financial expert joins us with what we all need to know before tapping into that account. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. If you are feeling financially threatened by the coronavirus and are considering tapping into your 401k, you are not alone. On this Finance Friday, certified financial planner and president of Shakiba Capital, Trevor Shakiba is sharing financial tips to consider before making any decisions. Trevor, it's great to see you there in your home office. And just break this down for us because last week on Friday when you mentioned this, I think this was the first time a lot of us were hearing that we might be able to draw from our 401ks without a penalty. So how does this all work and is it a good idea? Yeah, so it's interesting because that was the first time, like you mentioned, anyone had heard of it because there's so much new information and, and about you know stimulus checks and small business loans. And so I got a lot of questions and frankly, there's a lot of misinformation out there. The first thing you gotta know is, is it's, it's by provider or your employer. So it's not just automatic to everyone. So you have to check there. But the facts are this, if you're under 59 and a half, you now have the option, if it's available to you, to take a distribution from your 401k or retirement plan and avoid the 10% penalty. It's a big deal. Doesn't mean taxes have gone away, so you would still owe that. You can get the money back in to the 401k in three years and not have to pay those taxes. And if you can't get it back in, the good news is, is that you can pay those taxes over a three year period. So it's a lot of info and it's, it's good to know. Okay, interesting. So if you do take that distribution, I just want to be sure that I'm understanding. The taxes could be spread over three years if you choose not to pay it back. But as long as you pay it back within three years, you're not penalized. No penalty and no taxes as long as you get those funds back in there within that three-year period. At the end of three years. Okay, so another thing to consider, though, if you are taking a withdrawal or a distribution from your 401k right now, isn't that the equivalent of selling when things are low? I mean, isn't it never really a good idea to sell at the bottom? Yeah, that's a great point, and, and, and that's what I want to talk about is because, look, the market's come back some, but we're still down 20 or 25% from where we were in February. So when you sell, you're essentially locking in that price point and, and, and realizing those losses. And so just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. And look, even if you sell and you're able to get the money back in, remember the market in 12 months or 18 months could get back to where it was. We, we can't predict that. It could be a short time frame, or it might take longer. So just because it's available doesn't mean it's a good thing. And remember, this is your nest egg, so you don't want to tap it if you don't have to. Yeah, and if and when, Trevor, as you mentioned, 12 months from now, 18 months from now, when the markets finally do rise and recover, you're missing out, or you would be if you had taken a withdrawal, you'd be missing out on all that potential for growth during that time, right? Exactly, so that's very similar to if you were to take a loan. When you take that money, it is now out of those investments. So it's no longer experiencing, in theory, the growth, the appreciation, the dividends that you would have seen. So you wanna leave that money alone. We'll talk about it here in a second. If you absolutely have to, I'm gonna give some examples, but if you don't, make sure that you don't touch it just because you can. Well, and also, I know a lot of people are in some very, very tight financial situations right now, but. If your 401k is supposed to be your retirement plan, does this mean that a lot of people might have to rethink those retirement goals or potentially down the road, even work a little bit longer to reach what they would need for retirement? Yeah, exactly. No one's talking about this, but I wanted to make sure to bring this up. Remember, if you take a $25,000, $50,000, $100,000 distribution, that will dramatically affect those financial goals, in particular retirement. So you need to think through that, run the numbers, make sure you analyze that because then you may not be able to achieve retirement at 60 like you were planning. And you may need to know that you're gonna have to work longer if you take that distribution and you don't get that money back in. We're gonna get to some examples in just a second, but quickly, we should underscore that this is a last resort, right? In the meantime, we should be calling our credit card companies, calling you know our mortgage companies and trying to work out a deal with them before tapping into these funds. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's kind of how I'm uh, explaining this to a lot of people. Case by case basis, uh, last resort, communicate. We talked about this a lot over the last couple of weeks. Make sure whoever you owe money to, mortgage or car, 
let them know most companies are willing to work with folks in a variety of ways. And obviously, right now, a lot of people have received those stimulus funds. Use that wisely. Look at cutting expenses. Don't forget about refinancing, too. Rates are very low for your house or your car. There's a lot of different things to, to tackle first before you get to the 401k or retirement plan. And Trevor, very quickly, we're over time here, but what example would you give for a reason to tap into your 401k? Yeah, so I, I definitely wanted to, to bring this last point up because some people are going to need to do that. But look, if you have a housing problem as far as you don't want to get laid on rent or, or risk eviction, and then basic needs, right? So uh, my, my, my main point here is that if you need to use it, use it, but only use what is absolutely necessary when it's absolutely necessary. If you need 10,000, don't take 50,000 out just to get ahead. It will not work out well for retirement or any of the things that we just talked about. All right, Trevor, thank you as always for your fantastic advice on this Finance Friday. And in the meantime, if you would like to connect with Trevor, you can visit ShakibaCapital.com. Still ahead on Houston Life, a brand new distillery in town is helping out by producing not alcohol, but hand sanitizer. How they've changed their business model to help first responders and the community right after this. Well, you would usually find whiskey or vodka being made at a distillery. Kind of looks like it, doesn't it, in mm -hmm. this bottle? But that's not the case for one local company. It's so true. Get this. They are so new that they haven't even opened their doors to sell liquor to the public yet. And instead, they are helping the community by making hand sanitizer. Hi, my name is Zachary Hiller, and I am the vice president of the William Price Distilling Company. So we are a brand new distillery, so new we're not even making whiskey yet. Uh, we just have an empty warehouse. We're still waiting to install all of our major equipment. The still will be here. This will be the rest of the production floor. So our first official product as a distillery is not whiskey or rum or vodka or gin, but actually hand sanitizer. The first botch of uh, William Price distilling. <laughs> this absolutely was not in the plans uh, when we were opening the business. Two weeks ago, I could not have told you a single thing about hand sanitizer. And I think now, two weeks in, I could probably make it in my sleep. We've distributed about 2,000 gallons so far. And I would say almost half of that has just been given away and bulk donations to first responders and to doctors and nurses and veterinarian clinics. Uh, and again, any, any of these organizations that need it that may be uh, neglected through the supply chain or their normal suppliers, a lot of these places like police officers, hand sanitizer is not something that they normally think of. If, if our little bit of help can help keep these people that are on the front line, that are interacting with people on a daily basis, that are putting their lives and their health at risk. If this can keep them healthy, then, then you know, that's what we want to do. The response in the community has been absolutely incredible, more than I ever could have hoped for. When we first started this idea of, of converting into producing hand sanitizer, really our hope was to not lose uh, enough money where we couldn't afford to finish buying all the equipment we needed to be to be an actual distillery. But it, through this donation program that we've had, the community, the neighborhood, people are coming in that are still working, that are able to help out, and they're buying one bottle and donating three or four. And it's really been able to enable us into donating mass quantities to multiple different organizations. Uh, you know, for example, we sent about 200 liters to the Harris County Sheriff's Office uh, over the weekend. And, and that entire quantity, that's just for the prison in downtown Houston to keep, to keep the inmates uh, safe and healthy there. But the support from the community has, has been so great that we've actually uh, begun to hire some out of work restaurant and uh, bar staff from uh, the Houston area. Uh, so we, you know, we're fully staffed up with these out of work people uh, trying to make sure that they can make ends meet. But here's all of our, uh, our, our finished packaged goods right now. So anyone that's interested in getting some hand sanitizer, uh, all they need to do is come by the distillery 
Uh, the address is 970 Wakefield Drive, 77018. They were closed on Tuesdays, but open every other day from 1 to 5 p.m. We have a completely contactless, social distancing drive through. You can stay in your car the whole time. Uh, you're able to pre-order uh, online if you'd like to make a donation. Um, but anyone that just needs to come in, if they want a bottle, it's theirs. It's absolutely free. We want to make sure that even if you if you can't afford it, if you need that money for rent or food right now because you're not working, come in, ask for a bottle. It's yours. If you are able to donate and contribute, we are asking people for a minimum donation based on the size bottle and the quantity of bottles that they are taking. And that is going to go towards us being able to donate more hand sanitizer to more people like first responders and other frontline workers like doctors and veterinarians and people who are at risk as well. That is really and cool. And some great really work. great things happening. I know over at William Price, again, over in the Garden Oaks area, 77018. Check them out. The bottle is so cool. I mean, they're doing such great things. And of course, you can find more information about this distillery on our website of HoustonLife.tv. And we'll be right back. <laughs> on Facebook of ideas for us for date night. And check this out. C wrote in, hot tubbing is back at our house. We have no kids and a high privacy fence, so I'll let you figure out the rest. Oh, and frosty adult beverages with little umbrellas. Oh my goodness, hmm. C. Well, it sounds like you guys will be having a there. fantastic time. I have no <laughs> idea what she means by that. Lori Zimmer says her daughter and her husband had movie date night in their SUV, opened up the back and had sushi, drinks, candles, and watched a movie on their iPad. That is so romantic, very nice. Pick and dance or hot tub. <laughs> it see. certainly is. Have a great <laughs> weekend, guys. We'll see you on Monday.